Good evening, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting, Wednesday, September 30th, 2015. It's our first fall meeting as we gear up for uh, all the hectic activity until the uh, town meeting 2016. Um, the first item on this evening's agenda is we are going to review a draft of Dover's policies and, pr and procedures for health insurance on the Federal Affordable Care Act. Dave, I believe um, you can speak to this matter. If I you can, would, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Under the Affordable Care Act, we have to adopt certain policies and procedures. This particular one affects eligibility for health insurance. As you recall, under the new federal law, it's mandated for certain categories of employee. Uh, this draft was provided to us by our labor counsel, Kevin Feely, and essentially it calls for a look back period of a month, during which time we determine whether employees are eligible under the federal law for health insurance. Under our current rules and Massachusetts law, um, we generally pick up everybody that this would pick up anyway. Um, we might pick up one odd employee every five years under this policy, but essentially it's, it's no different than what we do now. But we are required to adopt a policy. We don't adopt a 12-month look back. We end up looking at a one-month look back, and that in increases our exposure with respect to eligibility. How do the um, employees, or the ex-employees, um, find out about this particular policy? How would they find out yeah. about it? Uh, that's a good question, Mr. Chairman. There's, there's no obligation for us to publicize it, and it doesn't have any effect on eligibility as a practical matter. Mm. Okay. Um, I do not have any questions at that time. Um, I've just seen this for the first time, and I, I do know it's uh, mandatory under the um, Federal Affordable Care Act. Robin or Candace, do you have any questions or concerns? Other than this is a mandatory item, and it's written by Town Council, Kevin Feely, who we know very well, and does a great job. No, I'm fine. No, I, I'm, I'm okay with this as well. No. I'm reluctant to read the whole thing out loud, I'll be honest with Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> But if anybody wants a copy, please call the selectman's office and we'll be more than willing to give them a copy. Uh, that being said, uh, we make a motion that the town of Dover adopt the policy and procedures for health insurance under the Federal Affordable Care Act. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Do we have to sign anything, Dave? You do not, Mr. Chairman. Good. Okay, as I mentioned as I open the meeting, we're uh, getting into the hectic schedule of the town meeting 2016, and the first um, item that we'll speak to is the next agenda item, which is review the fiscal 2017, the selectmen's police and highway capital budget requests. Dave, I believe this is uh, your item also. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we've received, uh, we've prepared the Selectman's capital budget and we've received the highway capital budget and the police department's capital budgets. And I appreciate uh, Mr. Hughes and Chief McGowan's timely response so that we can get a timely review of these items. Um, broad overview, all three budgets are simply carrying forward into fiscal 17, what was identified in out years for fiscal 17. So if I may, Mr. Chen, I'll just highlight by um, department the items for fiscal 17. Please. Uh, so we're looking at in the Selectman's uh, capital budget, we're looking at the protective agencies building, uh, kitchen renovation, uh, which was in an out year, but we've also added um, doing some work in the first floor bathroom consistent with that renovation. Uh, the projected total right now subject to confirmation is $12,000. We're also looking at painting the apparatus ceiling in the fire bays for $6,500 and uh, replacing the stairway outside of the cafeteria at the Carroll Community Center. The masonry wall that, that defines the stairwell out there is crumbling and we've experienced some significant moisture problems in the inside cafeteria wall. That's a $30,000 item. Uh, we're also looking to replace the mail machine which I think we moved up a year. Um, we don't have a price on that yet, but my understanding is they're not gonna support the, the machine that we have effective next year, so that's what's precipitated the moving it up. 
No approximate cost on that? I know that to be determined, but any ballpark? $15,000, I think, would be a uh, reasonable approximation of a price. How long does that usually last? Until they stop supporting it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, uh, do, Mrs. Pugach, do you remember how long the current mail machine has been? Uh, it's many years. It's mm -hmm. been a number of years. I think around 2000. Four, five, I'd mm -hmm. say maybe five or six. Good, very latest. Ten, ten years. Yeah. So many machines, they keep working, but people just stop, fam you know, stop supporting them, probably for marketing reasons. Okay. And uh, and that's pretty much it. Everything else has just moved up. And in fiscal 21, we've added some new items, uh, which you can see there. The only one of significance is the. Uh, proposed lighting upgrade and electrical upgrade at the Carroll Community Center, and we're still scoping that out and trying to develop a budget number for that, but that's in fiscal 21. All right. Good. Um, if you would, can you refresh my memory on why the kitchen renovation in the bathroom wasn't part of the um, protective agency building retrofit as it's going on right now? The, the um, dispatch renovation was the brainchild of the previous police chief. Yep. And like I'm sure we've all experienced in our homes, when you start to fix something, somebody looks and says, why aren't we doing that? So the new chief came along and said, how come we're not doing that? So it may, it's logical to include the kitchen and the bathroom in this phase after the renovation of the PD uh, dispatch area. Okay. If, if, if you recall the way that's set up, yeah. is the dispatch area is, is separate from the kitchen and right. bathroom. So it kind of makes sense to reconfigure that first, and then there's there's almost a wall and a hallway separating the two. Yeah, the space is very separate. I don't know. I don't know what it mm -hmm. looks like under the new configuration. Okay. Thank you. Um, the protective agency building, the painting of the apparatus ceiling and the firebase. Um, is that original paint? I imagine. Is that been painted? I think it was painted once before by. Um, inmates doing outreach for the uh, county jail, but it's time again. Okay. I was over at the Carroll Community Center this morning and I did look at the stairway and that is in a failing um, condition. Uh, so that does have to be replaced. And as you say, uh, cost subject to confirmation. At this point, would you go to Don Mills and ask for an estimate, or would you rely on Carl Warner to come up with that number? We'll ask Don Mills to take a harder look. Okay. Thank you. And then we talked about the replacing of the mail machine, and we'll figure out the cost on that one sooner than later. And that's just going to maybe two or three vendors and getting a number? I think there's a single vendor. That's right. Yeah, Mona's looking into it. Sure. <coughs> Okay, I think I understand the out yes. Um, Robin or Candace, do you have any questions? No, I do not. Okay, we will um, discuss um, in a later agenda item uh, thresholds for capital budget requests, so we'll try to tie some of this conversation to a later item. But uh, for now, um, this I'm satisfied with this. We, we don't have to take any steps to this right now, it's just an information. They're due to the Capital Budget Committee, I think, October 9th. So at your next meeting, you'll, you'll need to vote. Good. Right. We'll next meet October 8th, I believe. Yes, sir. So I have, I have one more question. So the boilers are out in 2018? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're pretty confident with the inspection that was done that... We're cautiously optimistic okay. that we can make it till 2018. The report that was done on this said as soon as we can, we should do right. it. And we've moved the controls out uh, back into 2018. I think, Mrs. Hunter, that was your suggestion that these really logically should go together in a single project. Yeah. And you know, the Warren Committee has placed um, an opinion on this, and it's a good suggestion and opinion. Maybe we want to group that together and go to maybe capital markets with that. Right. Um, and depending on interest rates and depending on the uh, financial scenario at that point. Thank you, Robin. Um, that being said, agenda item closed. Candace, all set? All set, thank, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next agenda item is to approve the fiscal year calendar. 
Well, we have Excuse me, we have the highway, police, police oh, and highway. Please. Thank you. I, They're all part of the same package, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I stand corrected. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Dave, please, please. So if we want to take the uh, police capital budget first, and again, uh, I commend Chief McGowan and Superintendent Hughes for maintaining the discipline of putting things in out years and then bringing them in. Uh, so what he's looking for in 2017 is a single police cruiser, much to my relief, a single car, and then uh, replacing the uh, radio antenna at the Grossman camp, which again had been in an out year before. Uh, an item of note that's a placeholder in 2021 is to replace the entire radio system for the uh, public safety for police at uh, a peg number of $150,000. And as Chief McGowan notes in his cover memo, the FCC sold their ban, so they're going to be looking for a, a new home communications wise. Car a year after last year. Replacement. Okay. Good. I don't have any questions on this. Chief did a nice uh, mm -hmm. write up on it. Mm -hmm. Very detailed, which is good. Thank you, Chief. And then, last but certainly not least, we have the highway capital budget. And uh, per usual, the, the note here is that Mr. Hughes has delayed, he's moved back out one piece of equipment that he had put in 2017 in his forecast last year because they put some money into it and they think they can certainly get another year at least out of it. So for fiscal 2017, all he's looking for is a slide in sander to complete the replacement of all of the old slide in sanders with stainless steel sanders. And the price for that's twenty three thousand nine hundred and seventy five dollars. Well, Mr. Hughes does a, a, always a very good job in his explanations and really gets the most out of his equipment. And I thank him for that. So I attended the finance committee on roads meeting where we discussed this budget at length, and um, you know, Mr. Hughes is very confident that the 10-wheel um, dump truck, which was slated to be replaced this year, um, it, it is just not necessary to replace this year, and you can certainly get through in at least another fiscal year with it. I think he said as long as it doesn't snow right now. <laughs> no, he didn't say that, because he told me he, 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 he is expecting a snowy winter. You know, as we speak to that, you look at 2018, 2019, those are going to be extensively discussed <laughs> capital budget night items uh, with the proposed 285 for highway. Um, we had some million seven. And, right, and again, he, he always points out, Mr. Hughes, that these are placeholders, right. and, and each year he's going to reevaluate whether or not it's necessary to replace that item. You know, his 10 wheeler is a 1979 truck. Right. He said they just don't make them like they used to. <laughs> Quote, unquote. I was very impressed. I asked him just a couple days ago how carefully he watched weather, or if he was involved with the predictions for the winter. And he said, not really, but he said what he tends to do is he uses the weather patterns coming in off the West Coast. And that's how he works it through the mm. winter time. He told me it was about woolly bears. <laughs> <laughs> he told me it was about acorns in the farmer's almanacs. <laughs> However it is, he gets it right most of the time. He gets it right, yeah, yeah. that's right. I don't see the brine machines out here, but I'll, I'll figure that out. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that, Dave. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Chief McGowan. Thank you, Craig Hughes. I wish all, all, all the um, couple hundred requests came in the eloquent write-ups that you guys do. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Good. 
Again, I'll try to go on to the next fiscal uh, agenda <laughs> item, which is to approve the fiscal year calendar. And I believe, Greer, you, I, you want to put this together? Yes, yeah, we'll work together on it. Really based on the previous year, yes, we try to keep yeah. in sync. And in, in consultation with the Warren Committee uh, and the town clerk for their events, and uh, the only um, uh, person we've not yet spoken with is the moderator regarding his availability for April 28th. So. Um, assuming that he is available on that date, and if not, we will revise the calendar, otherwise yeah. it's complete. That's a very much a traditional date also, the Thursday night uh, it before is. the so I, 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 I imagine he would be, but I can't until we speak to him. Yep, again. good. And you vetted these for all any religious holidays, I, I, yes. I hope? Yes, we have. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, I will make the motion that we approve the fiscal year calendar. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Greer. Thank you, Mona. I think of special interest to the audience is that the um, warrant closes January 15th. Mm. Uh, closes yeah, January 15th. Good. And do we usually say when it opens? Or is it, it always, always uh, open? No, we do on the, on the meeting that it does open. Right. Okay, next agenda item would be the clock is definitely broken now. It's 632. <laughs> you saw the end of that. Uh, 649. Okay, I digress. Excuse you're, me. You're a minute ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, next agenda item is appoint the assistant town treasurer. Greer, I believe you can speak to this. Yes, um, with the departure of David Dunahee, our former assistant treasurer collector to the town of Walpole. Mm -hmm for a promotion in that town after six years of service here. Uh, we had an opening, we had an opening, uh, we put out a job posting. There were nine uh, submissions of applications and of those four were interviewed and we um, recommend the appointment of Gavin Fisk based on his skill set and his experience. Is there a write-up in our package? I don't think I got one. There is not a resume in your package, Mr. Oh, write-up even on the uh, on the gentleman's name or anything? No, there isn't. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Oh no, that's fine. So, Gavin so Fisk. we we recommend the appointment of Gavin Fisk to the position of assistant treasurer. And how do you spell his last name? F I S K E. Good. Okay. Uh, would someone, um, any questions regarding Mr. Fisk? No. Yeah, if, no. No. Then I'll make the motion that we appoint Gavin Fisk as the assistant town treasurer. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And Greer, uh, next, um, it's, um, it's the same agenda item, we're going to appoint the transfer st station operator. So please. Yes, yes, there uh, was an opening at the transfer station with a promotion of one of the transfer station operators to the park and rec department. So we put this out to advertise and we received a total of four applications. Mm -hmm. And of those four, all, um, three were invited to interview initially, of which two um, responded and came in. We interviewed them and did not find them suitable for the position. Mm -hmm. And we received a late application from an individual, Mike Mitchell, and uh, based on our interview, we would uh, strongly recommend his appointment. He, he received uh, excellent references. It's a hard one to follow. Does he have similar experience? He's worked, his, his most recent work has been in a warehouse. Okay. Yes, so um, but he was, Cooperative. They said he was soft-spoken, polite, hardworking, took initiative on his own. I mean, he was really the whole package. Uh, his uh, the, the, his supervisor couldn't say no. Okay, couldn't excellent. That's certainly an excellent both reference. reference. Both of these appointments come with, um, with thirty or sixty-day sort of 
Probation. Yeah, in the case of the union position, the transfer station operator, it's automatically a six-month probationary mm -hmm. period uh, during which we keep a close eye on the employee, make sure they're uh, performing to our standards. And uh, for the non-union position, the assistant treasurer or collector, it's a three-month probation period with an option to extend or to terminate at the end of that. You know, it's a 30 day option, yes, maybe? Through, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'll make the motion that we appoint Mike Mitchell. Yes. As the um, transfer, transfer station operator. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you for stepping forward and uh, welcome to, to the town as an employee. Our next agenda item is, is dis discuss the increasing minimum asset threshold for a capital budget request. And uh, basically, uh, Robin, I know you're going to speak of this, but um, in the past it's been maybe $4,000 that um, most um, of the town departments have used. If the um, um, request has been over 4000 it's gone to capital budget. They've been in purpose, and the warrant committee gets involved in the discussion, and obviously the selectmen uh, know about all the capital budgets anyway. So uh, there's been recent discussion between capital and, and warrant about increasing that $4,000 number. And Robin, I know you're involved in that discussion. Please. Okay. So at the last capital budget meeting, we talked a little bit about um, the capital budget process that is used for items of $4,000 and a million dollars. And the um, question was, is this the right time given inflation to perhaps increase the minimum threshold for items that would be capitalized and hence go through the capital budget process for their purchases, which is a different process than the operating budget because it looks out five years whereas the operating budget is typically focused on, on one year. So um, I said that I would look into it a little bit, talk to Mr. Ramsey and the town accountant about whether this was dictated by accounting policy or if this was a change that we could, could make. Um, in, in my conversations, what I learned is that Gatsby's threshold is $5,000. So from a Gatsby standpoint, you know, they're really saying that any item that's purchased that's $5,000 meets, meets the definition of capital. So then I, um, on my own, without actually going back to the committee, I decided to look at some of the other surrounding towns to look and see if I could find their capital budget policies so I could get a sense of, of how other towns are handling this. And I did find that in some of the towns, they basically have two categories of capital. One that is more of a recurring type item, so something like a floor sweeper would fall into that category. Perhaps the, um, the vehicles, the police vehicles, you know, still to be decided. And then the second category were items that that were much more expensive and, and were, they might be replacement items, but they were one-off type replacement items, like a fire truck. And so um, I think because of Gasby, the Gasby limits, it probably doesn't make sense to go to the $10,000 limit, but I think within the capital budget, we could probably have a conversation of maybe having the two tiers so that we could have less of a vetting process for some of the items that are just, you know, regular replacements without large dollar thresholds. And that would really be up to the capital budget to develop that policy and come back to us. Thank you for that. I think um, on the surface that's a great suggestion and I'm, I'm uh, curious to see what the capital budget's uh, reaction to that would be because um, when I first heard of this discussion, I thought they were just trying to get things off their plate. So this keeps things on their plate. But, but, I, I, but I think it's less 
It's on, you're, you're absolutely right. It's on their place, but it's a little less. I, I, I think if they set up a process which is more of a, I hate to say this, but more of a rubber stamp than asking for a justification, it, it, it might work if, if we can find the happy medium. Mm -hmm. Do I understand there would be like a cutoff? In other words, anything under forty thousand would perhaps fall under the replacement. And I mean, I'm looking. I would, I would leave it up to them. I, I think, I think it really is. I mean, we would need to look back and see what capital we replace. Mm -hmm. I give, in my mind, I, I, all I can think of is our. our floor sweepers mm -hmm. that cost somewhere around four thousand dollars and you have to replace them every six or seven years so it would be items items like like that you know we did have some discussions at the capital budgets and I know in 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 private enterprises you have the same kind of discussions a capital if you're buying 20 tablets that gets capitalized, but if you're buying one, it doesn't because mm -hmm. it's $700. And so, you know, we talked a lot about technology, and technology's getting less and less and less expensive, but I still think that technology, especially for the schools going through the capital budget, makes a lot of sense because it gives us, um, we're because we're able to see what's coming down mm -hmm. the pipe for the next four or five years. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if this is going to help alleviate it and get it off their plate, but I think it's worth some more discussion. I, I certainly see where they're coming from, which is why I was more than happy to look into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. When you think about the discussions at town meetings, and I've been the last uh, half a dozen at least, um, some of the greatest conversations, and I'll use greatest uh, very loosely here, <laughs> have come on the smaller no, I completely agree. Right. Right. <coughs> and um, what that does to the value of conversation, town meeting, I, I don't know. But uh, interesting, some of the bigger ticket items really fly through very quickly. Right. And it's the small tickets, whether it's a phone system at Chickering or wherever it was a few years ago, um, that was talked about at length. Right. So I, I hope there's a consideration to that intangible, where conversation in the town meeting is very important. The discussion aspect of it. So I just wouldn't want to see the smaller items rubber stamped by cap. I mean, the rubber stamps don't probably not right. appropriate term, but uh, less vetting right. was used. So I uh, have some consideration to that right. um, point. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's certainly you know what we don't want to do is take away visibility, and this mm -hmm. would not take right. the visibility. So that's a good point. Right. Thank you. Good. So you'll go back to I'll go back and capital and and they'll be upset with me for, for saying because at first I said yeah ten thousand dollars sounds <laughs> great so <laughs> um, if any of you are watching be nice you know if I was on an island by myself I'd probably stick to the Gatsby and Gap which is also five thousand dollars well Gap is really interesting because Gap says it. It's wishy-washy. It says accepted. it could That's it could be five thousand or whatever your company's yeah. policy is deemed to be. Yeah. And, and then you go to depreciation schedules and regulations, and, and it's determined. Yeah. Well, tax yeah, and taxes. You know, for tax perspective, it's yeah. different. So. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, good luck with that conversation. I can't, I can't wait to hear the results. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, on to our next agenda item, which is appointments. And I believe Candace, Robin, and Dave have appointments tonight. So Candace, why don't you lead us off this Thank evening? You. Thank you very much, Mr. Dolly. I'm thrilled to say that Dr. Stephen Prussell has been appointed to Historical Commission to fill a vacancy, and he was kind enough to come to our meeting at the beginning of this month, and um, we loved him, loved having him come, and we're so grateful that he has volunteered for this. So I would like to appoint Dr. Stephen Kruskal to Historical Commission. And that was Barry's old spot? Correct. All right. How do you uh, spell his last name? K-R-U-S-K-A-L-L. -L. And Stephen is S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Doctor. Doctor Stephen. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a th three-year term. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, good. Thank you. Well, so so I mean, let's, uh, oh, we, we do have you have more, more? Candace? Yes. No, that's, that's so it. So do you have any questions about 
No, I the good doctor. No, I do not have any questions about the so, good doctor. So um, you made the uh, motion to appoint. I, I'll second Christmas. that. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll, I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. And Ken, did you have one? No, I no. don't. Thank Good. You. So, Robin, to you, please. So, I would like to. Um, it's for Finance Committee on Roads. Okay. And I think this is nicely done. And I would like to. Um, Scott, I have talked to Scott Mayfield, and he would be happy to renew, he, to do another three-year term. He has been the chair of that committee for the past two years and has done a tremendous job. And I, we were all very glad that he wanted to re-up with the appointment. So I would like to nominate um, Scott Mayfield to be appointed for another three-year term on Finance Committee on Roads. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Mayfield. I'll uh, second that motion. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Do you have any others, Robin? I do not. No, thank I, you I was that. pretty pumped that I had one. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I believe you have some appointments. I do, Mr. Chairman. Starting with, I believe, page three, the uh, Chief of Communication, Police Chief McGowan, has agreed to re-up for another year. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chief. You want to, uh, is that the only one or is you um, that, That's that one appointment. Uh, I have others. Should we vote on all of them after the fact or as we go? Uh, probably as we go would be mm -hmm. more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Good. Because we might forget. So uh, I will make the motion that we uh, appoint Peter A. McGowan as the Chief of Communications for the Town of Dover. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Moving along to page eight. Walter Avalon has agreed to uh, re-up for another year as the building inspector and zoning enforcement officer. And uh, Kevin Malloy and James Naughton have both agreed to uh, be reappointed uh, respectively as the inspector of wiring and the deputy inspector of wiring. Excellent. I'll make the motion that we uh, reappoint Walter Avalon for a one-year term as the inspector of building and zoning enforcement officer. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make the uh, motion that we appoint Kevin Malloy for one year appointment, uh, the inspector of wiring. Second. All in favor? Aye. And lastly, James Naughton, a one year appointment as the deputy inspector of wiring. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Moving along to page 11, Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Pugach has agreed to re up as the personnel rules ombudsman, female. Appointee? I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, no one has come to me over the years. <laughs> yeah, no one would. You had to say that, didn't you? <laughs> no one would. Um, okay. So, uh, and David, I'll probably put you on the spot right now, but uh, You're I'm real. going to make the motion that we appoint you a uh, personal rules ombudsman also. Or another one year term. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. He's honored. <laughs> and in addition, um, uh, Gray has accepted the additional one year as personal rules of Edmonds also, so I'll make both uh, uh, motions. Do I hear a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you, Gray. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome, Mr. Continue. Chairman. Excellent. Thank you, members of the board. Friends in town. And then moving on to page 13. Um, that's the list starting with the animal control officer all the way down through all of our permanent full-time police officers yep. and Chief McGowan has uh, asked that they all be reappointed. Mm -hmm. How do we do this one by one? Uh, I think you can do it by referencing the page. Okay. Okay. I, I don't mind reading their names if that's what you like. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I'll make the motion that we appoint uh, Lane Yoke as animal control officer. The following individuals are all um, uh, police department. Um, would you say officers or just members? Officers. Officers, thank you. Aaron Mick. Ed, um, uh, I always get Ed's last name wrong. Mayo? Mayo. Mayo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Ed. Um, Ryan Menice, Todd Wilcox, Charles Marshall, 
uh, Chris Von Handorf, Dave Chasen, Doug Common, Harold Graybar, uh, Graybar, uh, John Jonathan Cash, Nicole Bratcher, uh, Richard Colomore, uh, Robert Klaus, Warren Eagles, Patrick Murphy, uh, Mike Hefferman, Matthew Lavery, Lever Joseph Willard, Jeff Farrell. Uh, not on the next special page. Special one, right? Yeah, those are not reappointed. Thank you, the special yeah. officers. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dave. So um, I made the motion to appoint those uh, individuals. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Wait, there's still more. Before you jump ahead, how, how do we handle the special officers then? Uh, they are just they're special officers, yeah. So not a, they're not appointed. They're not appointed annually. Moving along to page 14. Mr. Yeah. Hughes has graciously agreed to serve another term as the right to know coordinator and superintendent of streets. Excellent. I will make the motion that we uh, appoint uh, reappoint Craig Hughes as the right to know coordinator. In addition to that, reappoint Craig Hughes as superintendent of streets to um, multiple one year um, appointments. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then moving along to page 16. Our treasurer collector, Gerard, Gerard Lane, has agreed to uh, re-up for another year. Thank goodness. Okay, excellent. I will make the motion that we uh, appoint Gerard Lane as the treasurer collector for a one-year term for the town of Dover. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then last, but certainly not least, on page 17, Paul Carew has agreed to re-up as our Veteran Service Director. That's the gentleman from NATO? Yes. Good. Thank you, Mr. Carew. I will make the motion to appoint Paul Carew, uh, uh, to reappoint him to an additional one year as the Veteran Service Director for the Town of Dover. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And thank you for all the uh, individuals who uh, put their name and duty forward for the town of this evening. And we'll win them down the list. And maybe at the next meeting, have we appointed all, all, all the liaison appointments and everything? Yep. I forget, I'll look at it closely tonight. Yeah, but, yeah, so we're all set as far as internal I appointments? Think, I think we did. I think so. I'm just been attending meetings. Yeah, don't yeah, good. Right, if not, I'd like to clean that up next uh, okay. meeting. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item and other business, we have a chapter 90 request, road resurfacing. Um, who can speak to this, please? I can, Mr. Chairman. Please. <coughs> uh, this is a, a, a basically an addition to a previous authorization for resurfacing of Hartford Street. They used more asphalt than they estimated when they were doing the work. Not uncommon. Okay, and the Commonwealth has no issues with Chapter 90 requests being altered after the fact? No. Good. This is Thank quite, you. their estimates are done on a, on a formula basis, but when yeah. you actually start laying it down, it depends upon conditions in the field. Sure. Thank you. What's the turnaround time on a Chapter 90? It's months, I don't know how many, from the initial submission for project authorization to actual reimbursement of the money, it can be quite a period of time, but it depends upon when we actually get to do the work and then processing the paperwork and the state processing it back with the check. Mm -hmm. But it's, we always get it back, well, I shouldn't say, we, we endeavor to always get it back same fiscal year that we did the work. Yeah, good, I was curious, thank you for that. Um, I imagine we have to, yes, I'll make the motion that um, we uh, amend our request uh, of the resurfacing of Hartford Street, Haven Street, Pine Street, uh, Poisset Street, um, in addition to the original $518,000 that was approved on April 21st of this year. We are requesting an additional $24,000. Uh, the motion is made. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 
And thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Hughes, for that also. I know he does a lot of work on these. Thank you. That was quick. Yeah. Okay. Prior notices. Mr. Lawrence, who's chairman of the Warren Committee, loves when I bring up prior notices. <laughs> As long as they're prior. Smile. <laughs> smile well, he gets to hear them the same time as you did. <laughs> um, let me get down to the details of the uh, prior notices. There's two of them on, in other business. The first one is a building maintenance prior notice, replacement of the air conditioning compressor for the east wing due to the existing equipment failure in the amount of $2,467.02. Is there any other story that you would like to tell about this, Dave? That's pretty much it, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Okay. Um, Doug, does the Warren Committee know of this prior to that? Probably not. Because we do not, but we are meeting the one week from tonight, so we will not discuss it. Good. Candace, you're going to that meeting. Yes, I will be. And I wonder if that is that night that was 92 degrees in this room. That this remember when we had had our last meeting? Oh right, it was very, very warm. Very, very warm. Yeah. <laughs> that could be yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. In other words, we were Exhibit A for yeah. that failure. Oh good. Yeah. <laughs> our stand knowledge right. is right. always important. That's right. It's not <laughs> good. And I'll make the motion that we approve the prior notice uh, for the building maintenance to replace. Uh, Placement of the air conditioning compressor for the east wing due to the existing equipment failure. The amount is two thousand four hundred sixty-seven dollars and two cents. Do I hear a second of the second. motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now the second prior notice is in the amount of ten thousand three hundred and forty-five dollars and thirty-one cents. That's also for building maintenance. Uh, and this is replacement of the AC compressors for the main floor at the library, repair of the heating coils and boiler repairs. Is this um, equipment failure or is this um, being? It's equipment failure. Oh, okay, equipment mm -hmm. failure. Yep. Okay, anybody have any questions regarding this particular item? No. Okay. Well then I'll make the motion that we approve the prior notice in the amount of $10,345.31. Um, for the building and the library building, the replacement of the air, AC compressor for the main floor, repair of the heating coils and boiler repairs. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we go on to the third part of other business, which are special licenses. Mona, thank you for this package. I love this new list that yes, Mona I puts together mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Oh, right. Deciphering handwriting, everything. I couldn't figure out what the heck is going on. But uh, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight uh, special licenses. One of being proactive. Um, and I'll read them and then we'll vote as one. The first the proactive one, the only proactive one, is September 11th at the Charles River School and it was a welcome back party. The next one, which is October 3rd, it is at the Connors Center, the O'Kane Rehearsal Barbecue. Uh, I don't, um, I probably won't say the names, I'll just say the type of event. Right. October 9th is a wedding at the Connors Center. October 10th, another wedding, and this one's at Hale Reservation. Hopefully the weather's good that day. Uh, October 10th, uh, we have a wedding at the Connor Center. October 11th, uh, another we another wed wedding at the Tis the Center. season. Tis the season, yes. October 17th, a wedding at Elm Bank. And finally, the last request for a special license is October 23rd, a symposium. Um, that's interesting. At El Mag. That is interesting. I'll have to see the chief's signature on that one. <laughs> the chief took a long time on that. When was it submitted? Long time. Yeah, last April. Yes, that's right. Yes. 
Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to find that one. I want to read that. Back. The very back. Oh, thank you. Oh, the inside. Thanks. Thanks. That's interesting. Huh. Okay, let me just put a couple down. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Candace is coming to the dark side on signals. <laughs> I am, I'm moving. <laughs> moving. <laughs> what else is going on in town hall tonight? Boy Scouts. Ah. Boy Scouts. Right <laughs> next door. <laughs> Robin, if you would please, thank you. Thank you. Again, I want to thank oh, you. Oh, Jim, she's, we need a motion. Thank you. <laughs> that's why, that's, you always surround yourself with people who are better than you. They just don't know it yet. Thank you, Mona. <laughs> uh, I will make the motion that we um, uh, approve the uh, special licenses as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you for that. Thank Mona. Yes, absolutely. Somebody's okay. paying attention. Yes, yes. <coughs> and we need that. Uh, next agenda item is to approve the September 10th, 2015 executive session meetings. Okay. I did not have a chance to read these, so give me a second. This was the executive session that we called on the 10th uh, that we went into for the purpose of a, um, collective bargaining discussions. September 10th, 2015, executive session minutes as written. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, next and look at this, it's only 6. It's only 6.32. Quick speed. <laughs> Pride myself. On that. Um, okay, I, I think you definitely need a new battery in this. <laughs> in the morning. Uh, Mr. Dolly is quick, but not that quick. <laughs> next agenda item, uh, which I always enjoy, citizens' comments. And we're limited to the amount of citizens this evening. Mr. Lawrence, do you have anything to say this evening as a citizen? I have no comments, Mr. Chairman. With that being said, I have Candace, one please. I, please. Would, I would love to say a special thanks to Superintendent Hughes for the, re the work that has been done uh, at the corner of Springdale and Church Street. Uh, the turn has been modified to make it more accepting, and yet at the same time it was so carefully crafted that it is keeping the traffic indeed slower, and that was part of the intent, to make it a safer turn. That is still happening, but they were able to give a little bit more space to allow some of the larger trucks through. And I think it has made it easier for all of us driving it as well. Um, we still are slowing down, but I think it's important. So, so I, I want to say thank you to Superintendent Hughes for that. It's aesthetically very nice. It is. Isn't it's it? nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I guess um, the bugle has sounded. <laughs> it's time to adjourn. <laughs> I, I would like to note that uh, Headmaster John Smith was on uh, uh, Messon last evening in a nice um, piece on the regional high school and how they've been uh, recognized as. Um, number like number 16 or 14, 14 yes, yeah, in the nation. In the nation. Sorry, and that was on last time. Had I, he served the uh, regional school in both towns very well in, in the way he spoke, and they had three children, um, three students, I should say. Uh, John Cohn's son was one of them on last night. He did a great job. So uh, thank you, Mr. Smith, for representing the towns very well, yes. and for the three students who are doing a good job. Uh, lastly, there is a some sort of a, uh, some sort, not a, a festival on the corner of Maine and, um, and mm -hmm. Springdale this weekend. Do you know the details of that? I don't know. It's the, it's the land conservation. That's being postponed, it isn't it? It has been postponed. Oh, it has been postponed. The wind, they have tents oh, I hadn't so seen that. Well, that, that just, they just decided that this afternoon. Well, I'm glad I mentioned it because uh, I yes. plan on uh, coming back yeah, and no, going for that. I, I believe it's moved to the 17th. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, good. And I'll bet by the weekend we'll, we'll understand why. Um, well, I think today, today in the parking lot in my office park, there were sinkholes. They had to, really? yeah, they had to get tow trucks to pull out cars. Oh, oh wow! Wow. Wow. Well, I'm glad I mentioned it. So anyone was planning on attending the um, uh, festivals, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, this Saturday afternoon into the evening. It's been postponed to the 17th grade. Is that what you said? That's nice. good. Uh, that being said, I'll make the motion uh, for adjournment. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you and uh, good night.